Parents made me pay rent and then kicked me out so that my golden child brother could move in. So I cut contact, but now they want my inheritance money which my grandparents left for me. Hi, I'm an 18-year-old female seeking advice on an incident that happened between me and my family, which consists of my mom, dad, and my older brother, who will call Brad. I'll begin with some background for a little context. So, I was the second child in a family of extremely high achieving people. Both my parents are college professors. Brad is six years older than me and has always been my family's miracle child because it was hard for my mom to get pregnant initially. He has always been this golden child, extremely good at whatever he puts his hands to. When I was born, the bar of expectations for me was set high because of Brad. I am extremely kind and generous, and I involve myself in a lot of social activities. I am not a top scorer or an exceptional athlete, but one thing I know about myself is that I am a good artist. Art has always intrigued me, and that's what I've pursued since a very young age. It was hard for my family to understand that having different interests didn't make me less capable. So according to them, I have been the failure child. The bias since my childhood has been so blatant that even my extended family could sense that I was treated differently. One Christmas when I was five, while opening the gifts, I obviously went ahead and picked up the bigger box. Even with the repeated insistence of my mother, I didn't leave it, so my dad decided to snatch the box from me in front of everyone. I began to cry, and they tried to shush me with a smaller gift, then handed the bigger box to Brad. He got a telescope, whereas I was given a dress, which I had like a hundred of at that point. The next day, my grandparents sent me a dollhouse, realizing what had gone down, and from that day on, they've been the only people to support me. My brother had just passed high school when I turned 13. He got into a good college, and my parents also decided to move us all to a better house in a suburban and extremely posh location. I wasn't very excited about the move because that meant my grandparents would be even farther away. Anyway, I had no say in it, so I went along. My parents had saved a good amount of their income for Brad's education, and the new house was taken on a loan. Brad and I didn't have a sour relationship, or a relationship at all, but I still decided to gift him a watch with my saved pocket money as a congratulatory gift. He saw the watch and smiled, only for my dad to intervene and take it away because he had gifted Brad a branded one. Brad didn't say anything, but it broke my heart, so from that day on, I decided to mind my own business. Every night at dinner was a horror. All my parents could talk about was how great Brad was doing at college. The constant comparison got on my nerves, and I cried about it to my grandparents almost every night. I had previously tried to stay with them instead of my parents, but my parents denied it, suspecting I would be spoiled if they let me stay with my grandparents. Now, it is legal in my state for people to work from the age of 14. So on my birthday that year, instead of making the day special for me, my parents decided to give me a valuable life lesson and suggested that I start working part-time to earn my own expenses since they were tight on money because of the new house. They had ample money to send to Brad for his expenses but were suddenly short as soon as I reached the legal age to earn. I felt lonely but didn't say anything because I knew there was no point. We moved to the new house in a few months. I had started working at a bookstore and was able to earn better than what most people got for the job due to the extra hours I put in. I had told my grandparents about it, and they were happy knowing I was financially free now but also wished I could move out soon for a better future. Brad, on the other hand, had been causing some trouble. He had gotten into a relationship and was missing classes and stuff, which led to my parents being frustrated at home. Within that week, my parents decided to have a talk with me. They told me that finances had been tough since they bought this house and had to pay for Brad as well, and they knew I was earning well enough for a part-time job. So they suggested I start contributing to the house with my money in the form of rent. Their explanation was that they were teaching me the ways of the world without necessarily putting the burden on me. I didn't say anything and went to my room. They got a call from my grandparents, who scolded them for treating me this way after I told them about it. They had a long fight, and after two to three hours, both my parents came to my room and asked me to either pay the rent from the next month or find another place to live. My first response was that I was going to stay with my grandparents, but it was too far from my school, and because they were quite old, I decided not to be a burden on them, irrespective of them insisting that I come to their house, and I started giving my parents rent. I would have helped them with the finances if they had asked nicely, but their holier-than-thou attitude was what led to our relationship turning sour. I was just waiting for school to be over so I could move out of their house because after this, I didn't feel any connection to my own family. The next two years were quiet for me. I used to mind my own business and stopped having dinner with my parents. I was doing okay at school, and with my final year of high school approaching, I could see myself getting into a reputed art school. My parents weren't concerned as long as they were getting their monthly rent, and they were actually preoccupied with Brad. Brad had just graduated from college and was unwilling to come home to be with his girlfriend. His life had completely derailed after getting into a relationship, with his grades going down by the end of his degree, due to which he couldn't get a good enough job. My parents were pressuring him to come back home, but he went off the grid for two days, and they freaked out at him bailing on them. When they got a call back, they were informed by him that he had married his girlfriend in Vegas. 
The next few weeks were tough because there were constant arguments at our home regarding this. Brad was trying to convince them to meet his wife once before passing judgment on her, and my parents were just constantly ranting about how he was bringing shame to our name. I couldn't have been less bothered, just that I started to hang out at my friends' houses more. No one other than my grandparents knew about this. So my parents eventually met Brad and his wife but weren't welcoming. They bitched about the girl after she and Brad left, and I honestly found them pathetic for this, but I wasn't going to involve myself because my last high school year had begun, and there was no way I was going to risk it for their petty fights. I had started to live at my grandparents' house for weeks at a time because of my toxic household and because I had turned 18. Things changed right before my finals. Things started to go bad between Brad and his wife because of our parents' interference, and they eventually concluded that divorce was the only option. My parents couldn't have been happier and blamed everything that was wrong with Brad on his now ex-wife. I was asked to pay for my parents' trip to Brad City to bring him back home, which I clearly said no to. They weren't pleased but arranged funds from somewhere else to get Brad back. A detail I didn't mention was that this new house we had moved to only had two bedrooms. So when Brad was brought back, my parents asked me to shift to the hall for the time being since I was about to leave for college in a few months. They clearly didn't care about me or my education and how this shift could affect me but wished for their golden child to have access to everything to start fresh. Because I was paying rent to them, I told them that this arrangement wasn't acceptable to me so close to my finals. They suggested that if this wasn't good enough for me, then I could go stay at my grandparents' house like I had been doing for the past few months, just that I would still have to pay the rent because most of my stuff would still be at the house. I expected Brad to say something, but he didn't bat an eye at our parents treating me like this. I couldn't believe how cruel my own family was being to me, but I decided to stay strong. I went straight to my room, packed all the stuff I needed, and called a cab to leave their house. While leaving, I asked them to do whatever they wanted with the stuff I left because I wasn't going to pay a single penny to help their poor selves and fund their child who couldn't do anything in his life. I had already called an Uber, so I stormed out. I called my grandparents on the way and explained everything to them and how I was coming to their house. They welcomed me with open arms and provided me with a safe space. They had gotten calls from my dad asking if I was there so that they could come there to ridicule me after I humiliated them, but my grandparents lied about me not being there and asked my parents not to bother them. The next morning, I saw I had gotten a few calls from them. But over the week, the number of calls started to decrease, meaning they didn't really care if I was doing okay, so in reciprocation, I went no contact with them. I studied hard for my finals and passed with good grades. I had also applied to colleges and was awaiting the results. One day when I came back home to my grandparents' house, I was surprised to find my parents sitting there, waiting for me. As soon as they saw me, my mom started to cry, and my dad, in an angry yet sad voice, began to berate me and called me the worst daughter ever because I abandoned them in their time of need and didn't help them financially when I could have. They were actually at my grandparents' house to ask them for some money because after I stopped paying rent, they were facing difficulties in paying their mortgage. They're now trying to make me feel like an a-hole by saying that family is everything and I abandoned them. Update 1, thank you to everyone who commented on the original post and understood my situation in that household. Agreeing with y'all, I do believe that my family has been cruel to me and my decision to leave them was right. I'll continue from where I left off. So, my parents had come to my grandparents' house, pleading for money to pay their mortgage. My grandparents were willing to listen to them but decided against it after they saw my parents blaming me for everything. Once my father called me the worst daughter ever, my grandpa lost it and gave it back to him in his own words. He told my father that he had been a terrible parent to me since my childhood because he expected too much of me. Grandpa kept going and let him know how everyone in our extended family pitied me because of how I was treated as a child. My parents tried to argue back but were shut down quickly when they were reminded of how they kicked me out to have their good-for-nothing son Brad back. Somehow he wasn't a liability to them, but I was. My grandfather then broke the news to those two. He told them that he has over the years seen me grow into this wonderful person and so has decided to give me my parents' share of the property in his will. My parents' jaws were touching the floor at this point. Realizing that they didn't have any other option, they began to shed crocodile tears and tried to convince my grandma to give them back their share. She reminded them that karma hit them in the face for what they did to me and that she had no regrets. My parents then began to beg me to convince my grandparents. They didn't once apologize for their nasty comments but expected me to treat them nicely because they were family. Because I have been a fairly docile person all my life, they expected me to be kind to them. But on seeing how hard my grandparents were trying to fight for me, I grew a spine and let them know that there was no way they deserved a kid like me and that maybe they could expect funds from their golden child, whose life they chose to destroy. They got extremely quiet all of a sudden and then began screaming at me, calling me names and wishing I was never born. My grandparents were done with them and asked them to leave before the cops were called. My parents left, all flustered. I began to cry and profusely thank my grandparents for being my actual parents, and that I didn't wish for their money after all they had done for me. They consoled me and let me know that they had made up their mind long ago when they saw how selfish my parents were. They had also saved some money for Brad because he was their grandchild, after all, but there was no way any of it could be accessed by my parents. 
They asked me not to care much about it all and to focus on my future, which I did. As I mentioned before, I had applied to a few colleges and fortunately got accepted into the best one. I decided to apply for a student loan, but after deliberating with my grandparents, I realized they were extremely wealthy and insisted on paying my tuition, to which, after a little hesitation, I agreed. I was going to leave in a month when the session began. About my parents and Brad, I hadn't heard about them so far and was happy things were working out this way because it was the first time I was feeling fully confident in myself. I was glad I had chosen to cut contact with them because no matter who it is, toxic people do make your lives miserable. Update 2, I thought the drama was over, but I was way off on that assumption. Since the last update, which was a week ago, I hadn't really heard from my family until one day I received an email from Brad. He mentioned in the email that he didn't have my number and wished to meet me once to talk. At first, I was a bit hesitant because honestly, we never really had a relationship, but then I brushed aside my worries and reminded myself that I had my grandparents with me. I replied affirmatively to the email, and we decided to meet for lunch at a local cafe. I had reached the location before Brad and was contemplating my decision to meet him. I chickened out and was about to leave when he showed up. He was looking pretty tired and had grown a stubble. It clearly looked like he wasn't doing okay. The first few minutes were a bit awkward, but I decided to initiate the conversation. Then he began talking, and boy, did I get some tea. So, he told me that the house was a mess since my parents found out we weren't getting anything from our grandparents. For the first few days, the blame was on me, and then it shifted to them fighting each other. Brad, who had already been going through a tough divorce, couldn't handle it all and had left the house and had been staying at a friend's. The day before, he visited home and saw the state of the house. It looked like a bachelor's pad that hadn't been cleaned in months. Both the parents weren't at their jobs but sitting inside the home, engaging in day drinking. Brad went ahead and cleaned the house, to which our parents replied that there wasn't a need for it because the house would be taken away in a few days as they couldn't afford it anymore. I felt extremely awkward hearing all this and didn't know how to respond because I had been in situations worse than this because of my parents and sometimes Brad, and there was no one other than my grandparents to console me. But I didn't wish to sound unsympathetic, so I nodded. Brad thought that I was sympathizing with him and kept talking, leading to him discussing his personal life. He told me that he had gone to meet his ex-wife secretly a few months back, and they ended up in the same hotel room. He said he had gotten a call from her yesterday, informing him that she was pregnant and wanted to keep the child while rekindling their relationship. Now, he revealed the actual reason why he wished to meet me. He told me that since I had gotten money from our grandparents recently, maybe I could give a tiny share of it to our parents and some of it to him so that my parents would finally be able to get their lives together and he could begin fresh with his upcoming parenthood. He reasoned that this was going to be a favor he'd return as soon as he could, and maybe I could do this for my brother in the spirit of our relationship. Sitting there, I couldn't believe his audacity. I thought all this while that he needed an ear, but he was actually there for money. I lost it at that point and decided to be petty. I reminded him that no one was there for me my whole life, and I remember him standing quietly when our parents were kicking me out, so he better not disgrace the word family with his filthy mouth and ask shamelessly for money from me. I also told him that it was our parents who were the reason for their divorce because they deliberately interfered by filling his ears the parents he was asking money for. Before he could say anything, I left money for my portion of the order and walked out. I went back to my grandparents' house and told them everything. They said they thought Brad was different, but as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Although my grandparents are still concerned about his ex-wife and his child, I think the fault was mine this time because I chose to respond to Brad and meet him, but there was no way I was going to entertain them any further. Update 3, this update is a week from the last one. I'll be moving to my college within the next two weeks. So the last time, I talked about how I reminded Brad of his place when he tried to ask for money from me. Everything I'm stating now is what I heard from my grandparents, who heard it from my aunt, who heard it directly from the source, Brad. After I told Brad about our parents' involvement in him getting the divorce, he went home angry and confronted our parents. They tried to calm him down and convince him that whatever they did was for his good, but he digressed and decided to leave them for good. They tried calling my grandparents to intervene and stop Brad from leaving, but they told our parents about the ex-wife's pregnancy and how there was no way Brad could be stopped now. My parents also had to vacate their house because they were unable to afford the high mortgage, and they had now moved to a very low-profile area. As far as I know, Brad had left to stay at his ex-wife's house, at least until he gets himself together, and after that, they might think about getting back together. Now, what I'm going to narrate has happened pretty recently, and I'm still quite upset about it. So, after Brad left, my parents somehow realized, or assumed, that it was me who told Brad everything and was the reason they were in such a fix in the first place. They decided to warn everyone against me and wrote a pretty delusional post calling me not only an illegitimate child but also a burden. They thought their posting such filth would garner them some sympathy, but people who had seen my childhood read that post and wrote some nasty comments about my parents, saying how undeserving they were of a child like me. A few who didn't know anything rang me up and chose some choice words to remind me how ungrateful I was as a child, and I replied to them, saying if they don't know me, their opinion doesn't mean two cents to me. 
It offended most of them, but honestly, I didn't care enough. The only thing I was quite sad about was my parents thinking so lowly of me. I had always tried to be what they wanted me to become, only for them to blame everything wrong in their lives on me. I cried to my grandparents about it, who said they would make sure I wouldn't have to tolerate my parents once I left the city to study. Now, since my parents' plan to defame me to their advantage had failed, they tried to use the legal route to get back the inheritance they had lost. The lawyer was a family lawyer and had a great relationship with my grandparents. He gave my parents a reality check and asked them to stop humoring themselves, leaving them embarrassed. Then he told my grandpa about it, who narrated the incident to us as a funny story. I don't think my parents' shenanigans are going to stop, but I hope things don't get any worse for me, at least until I leave. After I leave, I will officially be done with them, and none of it would be my business, which, to be honest, is a pretty exciting prospect at this point. Update 4, so, I am writing this update after a month. I am now living in the dorm of my college and having an excellent time adjusting to this new life away from the toxicity. I have still been in constant touch with my grandparents, which is why I am able to write this update. Before I begin, I'd like to answer a question that was being asked a lot. A lot of the comments mentioned that my parents are professors and wondered how it was possible for them to run out of money to pay the mortgage. I think people have underestimated how bad their financial planning was. The new house we moved to was extremely costly, way beyond what our parents earned. They thought they'd be able to pay through their savings but were way off in their calculations, and that's why they were facing such a financial crisis now. Now, about the situation with my parents. They have been badmouthing me to anyone and everyone, but most people have not been taking them seriously after their post. Brad, on the other hand, lived with his ex-wife for like two weeks and came back to our hometown in hopes of better opportunities. He had taken some money from his ex-wife and was searching for places to live because he didn't wish to go back home to my parents. My grandparents offered him their place to stay until he found a job, and he accepted. When they asked him about his future plans, he told them that he still plans to get back with his ex-wife for the sake of their family. Our parents tried to get in touch with him, but he outright asked them to get their act together before they try to be a part of his life. My grandparents mentioned to me that they wished to help Brad out because they could feel his desire to change and were going to offer him some money once he got a job. I didn't give any opinions but trusted my grandparents for their best judgment. A few days later, I came back to my grandparents' house to collect some stuff I didn't take in the first go. I also gifted them a painting I made, which they forcefully paid me for as a token for my first sale as an artist. I thanked them and got a bit emotional, remembering how my parents used to ask for money from me when I was just a child. My grandfather, on hearing this, mentioned how he found my parents taking rent from me absurd in the first place because they didn't have any expenses other than groceries. I asked him what he was talking about, and he told me that he had set up a fund for my and Brad's education since middle school, and that was what paid for most of our school and Brad's college expenses, with my parents having full control over it. This came as a huge surprise to me because I was told since my childhood that I should start paying up ASAP to reduce the burden on my parents and handle my own expenses. I told my grandfather that I had no idea of this, and he took it into his hands to confront my parents. Brad was still living there and had come back after his day of job searching around the town. My grandma invited my parents, and what unfolded was something we didn't expect. When my parents showed up, grandpa sat them down and asked them about the fund for my and Brad's education in our presence. They tried to cover by saying how it was used as intended, but on being asked further about why I had to contribute, they broke down. They admitted to using all that money for their own enjoyment and activities, never once thinking about how that would affect us. I couldn't believe how my own parents could be this selfish. After listening to everything they had to say, I made it very clear that I wanted nothing to do with them. Even if I ever, which is not a huge possibility at this moment, decide to have a relationship with them in the future, it will be on my terms. The next day, as I was packing to go back to college, Brad came to my room and apologized to me for everything and for not being there as a big brother. He said I was still family to him and he would love it if his child could get to have time with their aunt. I decided to forgive him and slowly build our non-existent relationship. My grandparents were happy that we were trying to patch things up, and honestly, if my grandparents weren't there for me, I don't know where I would have been by now. So, I have decided to dedicate my first professional painting collection to them.